Hello, and welcome to Badger Talks Live, which brings exciting happenings, resources, and talent from your UW flagship campus to the people of Wisconsin and beyond. I'm Ann Saucedo, and I'm from Altadena, California. I'm a rising junior studying microbiology and life sciences communication in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Today, we'll be hearing from Assistant Professor in, of Horticulture, Amaya Atucha, who will be taking us on a tour of the West Madison Research Station Vineyard and sharing tips and tricks for growing fruit in Wisconsin. Amaya is also the Fruit Crop Extension Specialist and Gottschalk Chair for Cranberry Research at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Her research program focuses on fruit crop physiology and production of deciduous fruit crops such as cranberry, apple, and grapes in particular. She earned her BS in horticulture from the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Valparaiso in Chile and her PhD in horticulture from Cornell University. Please welcome Amaya Atucha. Thanks, Anne. Um, as Anne was saying, um, I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Horticulture, and my work focuses mostly on fruit production. And I'm also with the Division of Extension, uh, and I, you know, provide services and support to all of the fruit growers in the state of Wisconsin. Yesterday, I recorded uh, a really nice video in the vineyard, in some of our research vineyards at the uh, research station of West Madison that is located in Verona. Uh, and so I really hope that you enjoy it. I'll be here to answer any questions and feel free to ask questions through the chat. Um, and let's go to the video and let's enjoy. And I hope that uh, you get to learn something about growing grapes. All right, uh, we're here at the vineyards in uh, West Madison Agricultural Research Station. Uh, we are about 20 minutes away from the main campus uh, of UW-Madison. Uh, in Verona and so what I want to show you today is a little bit about uh, growing grapes. I want to talk about growing grapes and specifically uh, the grapes that we're growing here are uh, grapes for making wine. Uh, maybe not a lot of you know but you know we have quite a bit of, of grapes growing here in the states and, and we have many 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 wineries. Uh, we have I think about somewhere between like more than a hundred wineries here in the state and so a lot of the grapes that we grow here and the varieties that we're going to be talking about today are specifically about growing uh, grapes for wine but we also do have some cultivars that we grow for seedless stable grapes and I think that this is going to become more common and as new cultivars are coming out from some breeding programs that are resistant to cold, which is obviously the most important thing here in Wisconsin to be able to produce grapes. We're going to see more of these seedless stable grapes uh, and they're going to be available for the public and for people to grow in their backyards. So I want to talk about uh, growing uh, grapes and one of the main things that we are concerned about or the special care that we need to uh, give to these vines to be able to successfully grow the grapes. So grapes, the same as any fruit crop, they are perennial plants. What that means is that they live for many, many years. And so basically what we need to do with these plants is we need to make sure that they're going to be able to survive the winter. That is the main concern here in Wisconsin. How can we make these vines to survive the winter? So one of the most important things is to be able to choose cultivars that they are cold hardy, cold resistant. We can grow the same type of grapes that they grow in California, growing here in Wisconsin because the winters are so tough. So the type of grapes that we grow here are hybrid grapes. So they're not the European grapes that they're grown in France or in Italy or in California or South Africa. These are grapes that are a hybrid between the European grapes and native grapes that grow wild here in North America. So there are many different species and these particular cultivars that we're growing here, they're a mix, they're a hybrid between them. So as I said, the most important thing that, that we are concerned about is surviving the winter and I know it's kind of ironic to talk about that when we're in the middle of the summer and it's actually a really hot day today here in the vineyard. But uh, one of the things that we do for that is that if you look at these vines, these are vines that we planted last year. So this is the second year that we planted these vines. And one of the things that you can, you can see as we get closer here is that there are multiple shoots that are growing up in this vine. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, multiple shoots. And this is really important because when we have a lot of cold damage, and we lose one of this main trunk, we always have new shoots that are going to be able to continue to grow 
and continue to produce fruit. So one of the things that I always tell growers is that we need to have multiple trunks. That is a very important thing. Another thing that I want to show in this vineyard uh, is the orientation of the vineyard. So you can see there's a little bit of a slope in this vineyard. This is great and there's a lot of airflow. What basically means is when it gets really cold in the spring, the cold air is going to flow down and drain down. So, and you can see at the very end, you can see some corn at the very end, but there's nothing is stopping that air from flowing. So that's another very important thing to have good uh, airflow uh, wherever you're establishing your grapes or if you're a homeowner and you want to have some grapes, keep it close to the house where it's going to be warmer, but also you want to keep it in a place where there's not going to be, you know, a low point where the cold air is going to sit and you're going to have a lot of damage. So those are very important things that, that you need to think about before you start with your vine to make sure that they're going to be successful. The other thing I also want to show is uh, you can see the soil here. We have uh, a mulch. This is a, a wood chip mulch. So basically this is just um, a mulch from you know trees and it's just bark from trees. And what this does is it creates a really nice environment for the roots to grow. So if I dig here, actually is kind of warm it's, it's kind of uh, humid still and it's cool while the top is very warm with the sun this type of mulch to protect the vines is really 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 helpful to keep them moist most of the time but also to control the temperature of the soil especially during the summer when it gets really hot this summer in 2020 it's been a, a pretty warm summer but also it has been substantially dry uh, we haven't had a lot of, of rain so having this mulch here helps keep that soil moist and help those roots stay in a very nice environment and help them uh, keep going so you can also see that this mulch works really well at uh, controlling weeds that's one of the biggest problems that you have when you establish uh, a vineyard when you establish these grapes is the competition with weeds so having something that covers the soil protects the soil but also uh, control these weeds are going to really help these vines take over and be established really fast. You want them to grow. You can see here, this is uh, this year's growth. You can see how long the shoots here are. They're going all the way up uh, to the top trellis. And so this vine is going to be in a great shape to start forming them for the following year. Uh, another thing that I want to point out, and, and, a, and a lot of people don't know about this, but again, going to the concept of making sure that these vines are going to survive the winters is that you can see that these shoots that are growing here, they all have different diameters. There's some of them that are very thick, some of them that are thinner. Uh, and so the thickness of the canes are very important. They, they are a way of showing how vigorous these vines are, how much strength they have to grow. So when you have some uh, shoots that are incredibly thick, it's actually not the preferable type of shoots that you want to keep to build up the main frame or structure of your vine. And the reason why you don't want that is because when you have really big and thick shoots, those shoots have a lot of water and in the winter they freeze and they're going to have a lot of damage inside them. So when you are choosing the canes that you want to build the frame of your vine, it's very important that you, sh that you choose those shoots are not very vigorous. The most, the, the typical thing that you would do is you would look at those that are bigger, the, the ones that are thicker, the ones that have the most strength because they say, oh, okay, these are really healthy ones. But in the reality, those are not a good choice. You always want to choose something that is about the thickness of a Sharpie. Those are the ideal type of uh, canes that you want for building the trunk and building the main structure of the uh, vines. I also want to show here, there's, there's a, a, a vine that we planted actually this year, it was a replant. And what I want to show is uh, we just have some chicken wire around it. This is really important. We lose a lot of vines uh, from bunnies, rodents that come and they chew on them. So protecting them is very important during the first maybe two years. After that, we don't get a lot of damage. We do get some damage in the winter from deer but but most of it is during uh, the growing season these vines also have irrigation it's something that maybe we didn't think about 10 15 years ago but with climate change and changes in precipitation even though sometimes we get extremely wet springs 
in a year like this, we have had to irrigate several times these new vineyards because these vines have a very small root system. The roots are not extending in a big volume of the soil. So even when it rains two inches, the roots are only maybe in the first foot. So that is going to dry very fast and you want to make sure that the vines are not stressed because as soon as the vines are stressed, they're gonna stop growing and you're not gonna be able to form your vine. It's gonna take you several years until you are able to have a fully mature vine that is gonna have fruit. So once you have established them, just like you see them here, there are different ways in which you can train your vines. And, and this particular vineyard, you can see there's a top wire here about you know five and a half feet high where we started training these vines and you can see here the shoots that we are they're being wrapped around these trellis these are the tendrils of the vines they are uh, a type of shoot a modified shoot that grabs on everything to keep growing so you can see how these ones are already uh, growing uh, and staying in this position but there's multiple different ways that you can grow uh, grapes and what I want to show you is I want to go to an older vineyard because I want to show you a couple of ways in which you can train the vines uh, to have fruit so we're gonna we're gonna move now and we're gonna go this way and we talked about you know different forms that you can give the vines uh, that might be more work less work uh, that could be you know for better fruit depending on the type of soil that you have if you have uh, a site that is very vigorous and the vines are going to grow a lot there's different ways of forming them so that you can control how vigorous they are if you are on a soil that let's say is very sandy and for example one of the things that could happen is that you don't have enough strength maybe you want to build and train them in a different way to encourage more growth a lot of these hybrid scrapes they tend to be very vigorous so most of what we really want to do is we want to find a way of growing them so that we can put more fruit on them. When we grow any type of fruit crop, one thing that is important is we want to balance what is the reproductive growth, basically the fruit, and what is the vegetative growth, and that is the leaves and the shoots and the roots. So you want to find a perfect balance. You need to have enough leaves and enough shoots to be able to produce fruit to ripen your fruit to be able to put a lot of sugar on that but if you have too much of that what's going to happen is that you're going to end it up with a lot of shade and all of your fruit is going to be growing inside the canopies and that is not a good thing why because that fruit is not going to ripe on time that fruit is not going to have enough sugar it's going to be probably very acidic it's not going to develop a lot of colors and this is true not only for grapes it's also true for apples and for peaches and for cherries any fruit crop that you grow you need a lot of light and light is the most important thing and so one of the things that I want to show you here going back to how the vineyard is set you can see that the rows are oriented in a north-south way what does this mean this means that this is the way that the rows of vines are catching the maximum amount of light so they get the maximum amount of light during the morning on the east side and then the maximum amount of light during the afternoon on the west side and that is really important because that makes the vines more efficient at growing fruit and it also exposes that fruit to light to a lot of light and that makes that fruit as i say sweeter also less diseases because they dry faster and they get warmer so those are all really important things when you're looking for a spot to plant any fruit crop you need to make sure that it gets the maximum amount of light possible uh, if you're planting them in your backyard just make sure what is that spot where you get the maximum amount of light and that's where you want your tree to grow many times i get questions about why my fruit you know is green it doesn't ripe on time or why my trees are not growing sufficiently and many times it's because they're not receiving enough light so a good estimation is find a place where 60 to 80 percent of the day you get sun in there and that's a good spot to plant a fruit tree so let's look a little bit about uh, this vine here we have um, a very different training system from the one that i was showing before this training system here is called scott henry and it's actually not a very common way of growing them 
You can see here, this is uh, the vine. These are vines that were planted in uh, 2012. So they are eight year old. And you can see here what I was talking about before. There are two trunks in here, one and two that are forming this vine. And so if I lose one in the winter, I can cut it down and I'm still gonna have this other one to retrain or reform this part of the, of, of the vine that uh, I don't have anymore. And it will take me way less time than having to plant a new vine and start from scratch with it. So here, what I want to show you, so we have the trunk and we have these structures that are like trunks, but they run parallel here. And this is what we call a cordon. So they are permanent structures uh, that stay here just like the trunk and they're called cordons. And out of the cordons, you can see that they're uh, the shoots of this season that they have the fruit, all the clusters. So you can see here, there are four cordons, two here on the base and two up here. So we have another set of cordons all the way up here, one there and one here. So this is what we call a double canopy. With this, we are able to grow double the amount of fruit that we are able to grow in the previous system. And so I want to show you here another cultivar that is trained in a high quarter. And in this case, you only have one pair of cordons on each side of the vine. So in this case here, you have the trunk. Again, we have two trunks going up here. And from there, you have a pair of cordon that is growing up here. You can see here it's older, it's um, lignified. It looks like the trunk. And then you have another one here. That one out there has four, so it has double the amount of fruit. So what that one allows us to do, and going back to that concept of the balance between how much fruit and how much shoots and leaves you have growing your tree, it allows us to calm down the vines when they're very, very vigorous. Look at all the beautiful clusters of fruit. There's a lot of fruit there. That fruit will require you know, a lot of the sugars that are being produced through photosynthesis in the leaves are gonna go in to feed these clusters to grow and to make them sweet. If we didn't have so much fruit, what the vine would do is they would put more vegetation and it would put more leaves. And so this is a great way of hanging a lot more fruit on the vines. The other thing I want you to, to, to look at is how well exposed this fruit is and the amount of light that are getting. So the sun is coming down here, so you can't see that much, but during the afternoon, this fruit is completely exposed to the sun. What that is going to do is going to make these berries become really, really, really warm. And so when they become warm, and when I say warm, we're in Wisconsin, so we're not talking about, you know, the kind of heat that you can get in places like, you know, valleys in California where they grow grapes. So they get warm enough that a lot of the biochemical processes that happen to produce the color of the grapes are in haste, but also things like breaking down acidity. If you taste a grape that is not ripe, it's going to be very acid, and that fruit is not going to make good wine. You want grapes that are sweet and that are low in acidity. And so for that, the sun is really important because, as I said, it warms up the berries and it helps drop a lot of that acidity. The other thing that you can see here is with all that sun that we get here, when it rains, it dries really fast and that helps keep the vines free from diseases, which is a major concern for us here in Wisconsin because it rains so much. And so the more free water that we have, the more humid it is, it's more conducive to have diseases. And what that means is that we need to control those diseases. If not, we're gonna lose all our fruit. And in many times it requires the use of pesticides. So having open canopies like this and having a lot of light and a lot of air really helps avoid getting diseases and not having to spray uh, any pesticides, which is what we don't want to do. Other things that we do to increase the light is that we remove some of the leaves. So if you were to look at some of these shoots here, uh, you can see here there's, there's not a lot of leaves because we took out some of the leaves, we removed some of the leaves so that the clusters are actually exposed to more sunshine. So we usually do this when uh, the flowers have set the fruit and you have tiny little berries, sort of a little bit like the size of a, of, of a green pea. That's when we start removing them and this helps open up the canopy. Another thing that I wanna point out is that you can grow the shoots in different directions. 
So here, because we have a double canopy, some of the shoots are growing up and some of the shoots are growing down. Versus in this other cultivar, it's a white cultivar that's called Brianna. In this one, you can see that the shoots are growing down. And this is a really nice system to have the shoots growing down because it doesn't require a lot of work. Basically, what's gonna happen is during the spring, when the shoots start coming out of the cordons, uh, they're going to just bend down because of the weight of the fruit. And so you can see here, this, is, this cultivar is called Brianna. It's a really nice cultivar. Uh, has a, a really nice aroma, even though it has seeds. You can also eat it as, um, uh, you know, dessert, grape. Uh, it does have seeds, but the berries are very big and they're very sweet, and it's, it's a very nice cultivar. We really like this cultivar. It makes a very nice um, wine with a very fruity aroma. So this uh, grape, it's a, it's, a, it's a great cultivar. I really like uh, Brianna, and it grows really well here. The other thing I want to talk about is when the grapes are ready. So there's different ways to figure out when those grapes are going to be ready to be picked. One of them is obviously the change of color, but the change of color happens way earlier, before the grapes are ready. So what you can see is when the grapes, especially the green ones, that they don't change color, when the berries start getting soft and you can press them, that's a good indication that they are starting to uh, ripe and being ready to uh, harvest them. Another thing that you can look at here, I, I took uh, a berry and what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna split it and I'm gonna show you uh, here inside there's the seed. So if you have a variety that, that is a seeded variety, you can see that that seed is dark. When that seed becomes dark, that is yet another indication that the grapes are getting ready. And then the best way to do it is also to taste them. Some people, you know, like them very sweet. Some of them like them a little bit to be a little bit more acidic. And so tasting them every week is really important to figure out when they're going to be ready. In a vineyard, in a commercial vineyard, we would um, use some instrument to figure out the amount of sugars and acids. Uh, and so we do that and commercial vineyards would do that as well. You can also do that. One of the things that are, are very common to use is something that's called a refractometer. That basically what it does is you squeeze a little bit of the juice of the berries <coughs> into this refractometer and you look across the light and then the light, when it hits this solution that has sugar, is going to refract the light in different ways. The higher the sugar is going to change the way that that light is, is crossing uh, that uh, juice and that is able to tell you how much sugar there's there. And so it's very common to use uh, things like that. But if you just have grapes uh, in your backyard, as I said, in the case of the green cultivars, when they get soft, when the seeds become uh, black, and you taste them and they're sweet enough, they're ready to go. And then very similar with the, with the red cultivars, uh, this cultivar that we have here is called Frontenac and it's a variety developed by the University of Minnesota in their uh, cold hardy um, grape program that they have there. Uh, and this one, you can see the berries are much smaller, which is not typical from the grapes that you buy at the grocery store that tend to be very, very big. And the reason why is because they are for making wine. And so when you, want, when you have berries for wine, it's very important the ratio that you have of skin to pulp because in the skin is where you get uh, a lot of the color that the wine is going to have, but also a lot of the um, chemical components that give the wine uh, that, you know, taste uh, the aroma, uh, and also, you know, things like the tannins that we talk about, uh, the uh, phenolic compounds, all of that are very important to preserve the wine and to make that wine last and be able to age. So the skin are really important for making wine, much more than the pulp, because a lot of the components, the biochemical components that we want to have in the wine are in the skin. And that, that relates yet again to be able to open up these canopies and have really nice exposed fruit. So with that, I hope that you learned something new about grapes and that we grow a lot of grapes here in Wisconsin. And if you have any uh, questions, I'll be happy to answer questions, but also, 
If you wanna um, visit our website, we have a website. It's called www.fruit.wisc.edu. You can find a lot of resources about growing all sorts of fruit here in Wisconsin. And obviously a lot of what I talk about grapes. We also have uh, you know, a lot of videos that you can watch there about growing grapes and resources for homeowners. Thank you for listening. Okay, well, I hope that you guys enjoy the video. We have uh, some questions here in the chat that I'm gonna answer. Uh, the first question is from uh, Lance Larson. He's asking about Japanese beetle. Uh, says that uh, they tried grapes last year and the plants got destroyed by the beetle, that they wrapped them uh, and what else can they do to protect them? Yes, Japanese beetle is definitely uh, uh, one of the big insect pests that we have. It's a big problem. I'm not an entomologist, but I work very closely with uh, the fruit crop entomology, Dr. Christelle Gadeau. And from what I've learned from many of her talks, I have a, uh, the research shows that the vines can act, actually withstand quite a bit of damage. About 30% of the leaves can be skeletonized or damaged. You can see those holes in the leaves uh, and the vines are gonna be fine. There's no effect on yield or fruit quality. So you get, the vines can withstand a lot more than what you think. The netting them, uh, to exclude the, the Japanese beetles is definitely a really good option to do, especially for new vines. It gets a little bit more complicated when you have older vines. Uh, there are some other organic products that can deter them. Uh, things like cowling clay uh, It's a product. It's just a white clay that you spray with water. And that also creates sort of like um, um, a film on top of the leaves, a white film. And the, when the Japanese start chewing on the leaves, they just really don't like it and they just go away. Uh, the other thing that you can do, which is a lot of uh, time spent on that, is just pick them in a bucket with water and soap and just take them out and put it there. Uh, if you don't have a lot of, of vines, uh, that's another alternative, organic alternative. In the vineyard commercial practice, we do have to spray sometimes when we get over the threshold of uh, the limit that the vines can withstand. So, so we use pesticides sometimes. And, but obviously we try to avoid that and there's certain limits to which um, we get to that point. And once we pass that point of, of, of damage, that's when we apply to control it. There's a, a question about transplanting uh, conquer grapes. So this is Laura Kelly is asking about um, any advice about transplanting grapes. So transplanting grape is uh, absolutely doable. Um, what, you, what I would recommend is uh, to do this maybe now in the fall. Uh, take uh, the vines uh, with some of the root system and pot them uh, in, a, in a big pot with a lot of uh, soil, just regular media that you get in any uh, garden store. Water them well and keep them during the winter, probably in a place like the garage where it's not really cold because what you are, what you are concerned about when you have them potted and you want to transplant them in the following spring is that those roots are going to get um, dry and also that they're going to freeze and then that's when the vine is going to die. The other thing that you can do is collect some of the canes of this year, cut them. Uh, the canes from this year around the end of September, beginning of October, you're going to start seeing uh, this brown tissue develop. Uh, it's basically the bark is developing and you can cut that and um, make some with a knife, make some incisions on the bark and then just put this in media Again, any media that you buy from, you know, uh, just media for, for pot plants inside your house, you stick them in there and you water them, you keep them moist. Ideally, if you have a warm mat that you can put underneath the pot that could warm up that soil, that is going to help the production of uh, roots. And then you're gonna have those canes that are gonna have roots at the beginning of the spring. And then you can go ahead and transplant them wherever you want in, in your yard or in your vineyard. Uh, there's a question about thinning leaves. So Becky Bullock is asking about, uh, do you thin the leaves away from the plant? If so, do you do it on the morning side? So the removing of the leaves is actually maybe two or three leaves that are very close to the clusters. So the idea is to remove them so that the cluster get, it's not, those leaves are not blocking the light from the clusters. So we don't remove all of the other leaves. Those other leaves that are um, on the tip of the shoots and producing new leaves, those are all the ones that are actively 
using photosynthesis, doing photosynthesis and producing sugar to feed those clusters. So you don't want to remove those. The only ones that you want to remove are two or three that are close to the clusters and shading them. You can do it on either, either side. The important thing is that you do it early on in the season. And I think in the video, I said that about two weeks after, you can see that the flowers have set fruit. So you have a small little berries, um, maybe you know the size of a pea. They're green and really hard. If you do it at that time, what's gonna happen is the skin of those berries are gonna toughen up because you're exposing them to the light and there will be no damage. If you do it really late in the growing season and you remove leaves now, for example, what's gonna happen is that those skins of the berries have been growing in the shade this entire time. So if you take out those leaves and you expose them to the sun, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get sunburned and you have a lot of damage because those skins are so thin because they've been growing in, in the shade. And so they're not very well developed as if you were to grow them exposed to the sun from you know, the very beginning of uh, the berry development. Uh, but you can do it in either in both sides. We actually do it on both sides in the vineyard. There's another question about um, nets. So a lot of you saw that there were nets in the vineyard. Those are actually to keep the birds out uh, during this time, especially in the last you know, two, three, four weeks, even it's been so dry here. Uh, and those grapes are getting sweet and they're juicy. And so we get a lot of bird damage and we put nets every year to make sure that the birds are not getting in, in there. So they're only for, for birds, they're not to exclude any insects. Um, we have another question from Valerie about irrigation. Does the irrigation system water uh, the ground so that the roots take up the water or does it spray all the leaves of the grape uh, vines? So the uh, irrigation system is only for the roots. We don't over irrigate the vines. There's no point of it because the water is subtaken by the roots, not by the leaves. And if you keep those leaves uh, water, you are going to increase the possibility of getting diseases. So you're getting a, you have a lot of moisture in the canopy and it's also warm and that is very conducive of, of, of diseases, of foliar diseases. So we wanna keep that foliage as dry as possible, but I mean, it rains quite a bit here during the summer, but this year, for example, is a good example. We haven't had a lot of rain, so that foliage has been relatively dry and we, we've seen less disease incidents. So the irrigation line goes only on top of the soil, you can bury it uh, as well, but it's to irrigate the soil for the plants to take water. There's another question about best cultivars for table grapes that can be grown in a home garden. So some of them are, so are relatively old cultivars, uh, but things like Somerset seedless works really well. Uh, Mars is another one that we've seen that works well when we've uh, grown them here in Madison. Uh, Madison is a little bit warmer. It's the southern part of the state, so might not be the case for northern parts of the state where it gets a little bit colder, so you have to try that. Um, another one is Reliance. It's another cultivar that, that we really uh, like and works well. And we are recently uh, testing some new selections from the University of Minnesota for new table grapes. And so we hope that they're going to release those cultivars and that we have really good data to share with our growers and with homeowners about what are the best ones that grow here in Wisconsin. I do have a publication with uh, Extension. It's one of the A series. You can find them uh, uh, at the um, Extension. Uh, I don't forget, I totally forgot the name right now, but uh, Extension has a website where you can find a lot of this publication. It's an A series publication that talks about best cultivars for uh, growing fruit, different fruits in Southern Wisconsin. So you can go there, get, uh, it's a long PDF and it has a selection of different table grapes that grow well here in Southern Wisconsin. And they have the description and their characteristics and when you harvest them. And so, and, and there are a lot of information, not only for uh, table grapes, but also for apples and for cherries and for uh, peaches, all sorts of uh, fruit crops. So just go ahead and check them. You can also find it in our website. I think I, I, I commented that in the video um, and, and it's been posted in the chat. You can go into our website and find for the home gardeners, there's a section there and you can find those publications too. 
And then we have another question about uh, what is the best time to plant new vines? Really good question. There's actually two times where you can plant vines. You can do it uh, in the spring, which I feel is the preferred time uh, because then you have the entire growing season to get those vines to establish well where you planted them to extend their root system and uh, have a better chance of succeeding the first winter. Uh, and so that the best time in the spring is any time that the soil has thawed and is relatively dry. You don't want to uh, start digging a hole where the soil is very saturated because if you have a very heavy soil and you start uh, digging a hole to establish your roots, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna feel the sides of the hole and then the roots are gonna have a really hard time trying to penetrate that soil. And they're going to be, so it's almost going to be like a pot effect. They're going to be constrained to that area. So make sure that the soil is, is, is dry when, or relatively dry when, when you're planting them. Um, and so anytime around, you know, mid-May is a good time to establish grapes. The second uh, time that you could do it is now in the fall. It's a little bit more risky uh, to establish now in the fall because uh, what can happen is that we have a really early uh, frost event in the fall and then the vines could have some damage. But uh, you can also give it a try, do it now. Uh, in that case, when you, you, what you're gonna be establishing are uh, vines that are actively growing. So you're gonna have leaves and new shoots. When you establish them in the spring, you, what are you gonna get is a piece of cane, just a, a long, lignified piece of cane with roots and there's nothing growing out of that. So it's easier to handle as well when you do it in the spring. Um, we have another question from Connie. If you put in pot during winter, how much do you water through winter? That's also a good question. Uh, you don't have to water them a lot. You don't want them to be stuck. So basically if you, uh, you water them and it's gonna start drying and if you take some of that soil from the pot and you squeeze it um, and you can see that the soil stays together, uh, even when you press it with your thumb, it means that there's enough moisture there. If you press it and it just breaks down, it cannot hold the soil all together. It means that it's a little bit dry and you wanna water them. It will depend on how dry uh, the, the storage place is. And the winter gets pretty dry, so there's a lot of moisture that's gonna come out of the soil and also the temperature in which uh, the room is. So you'll have to you know, be checking constantly that pot. But you, as I said, you don't want them to be soaked in water because then the roots are, are going to rot. Uh, and I think that that, that was um, the last question. Uh, oh, there's another one. So this is the last question. It's when and how do you prune the vine? <sighs> this is uh, not an easy answer because pruning vines is uh, something you know, that takes some time to learn how to do it. The best time is to do it in the winter, but I usually recommend homeowners uh, to prune them in the early spring. Because that way you're sure that uh, when you're pruning, you're not going to expose those vines to really cold temperatures after you prune them. Because when you prune them, you're basically, you know, making a wound in that tissue. So you want that to heal as fast as possible and make sure that the vines are not going to be stressed by really cold temperatures. So if you can prune those vines in April before you start seeing some of those buds swelling, uh, that's a really good indication. And the, re and the reason why you want to do it before the buds swell is that when you're pruning the vines and the buds are, are, are swollen already, it's really easy to rub them off. And so you take them off and that, that you're not going to have any shit coming out of there. So before the buds swell, but you know, as late as possible in the winter. There's plenty of videos about how to prune vines. It will also depend on the, on the type of trellis and, and uh, training system that you decide. What I, what I wanna say is that when we prune the vines in the vineyard, we remove about you know, 65 to 70% of all the shoots that were produced a year before. So it tends to be very aggressive, which is not the case necessarily with other fruit crops like you know, apple trees or pear trees that you don't prune that much. In the case of the vines, we do remove almost 70% of everything that was produced last year. Uh, and again, I mean, it's, it's difficult to explain it through a video but, uh, and a chat here, but there's a lot of videos uh, on YouTube where you can find how to prune grapes. So um, 
I think that with that, uh, there's, there's no more questions. As I said, uh, you can go to our website. We have a lot of resources there for homeowners and also through extension, uh, some of the PDFs uh, to download. Um, you can download it uh, through extension. I think that you can download the PDF for free and you can also purchase uh, the hard copies if you want to. And I think that with that, uh, we're done. And um, you know, thank you for, for listening. If you have any questions, feel, feel free to email me. Uh, you can find me you know, at UW Madison. You just Google my name or go to the Department of Horticulture. You'll find my information there. And, and it, was, uh, it was a pleasure to you know, talk about grapes and I hope that people get uh, interested in growing fruits. Thank you. <laughs>